Hey, welcome back to video two. In this video, we're going to be going over some more advanced things you can do with parts, okay? The first thing I wanna start out with is different kinds of parts, the different types of shapes we can put in our levels. So far, we've just put these boxes in our worlds, these squares, these rectangles. We're gonna try putting some different shapes in there to make it more interesting. Up here at the top where that part button is, you'll notice there's a tiny little arrow underneath it. If you click on that, you'll see there's a drop down where we can select different types of shapes. And we have four different shapes we can select. We have block, which is what we've done so far. We've been using blocks in our levels. Then we have sphere, which is a sphere like a ball. Then we have wedge, which is kind of like a triangle. It's, uh, it's got a sloped side to it. And then cylinder, which is, uh, well, it's like a soda can, okay? It's uh, round on one side, then flat on the top and bottom. So you can go ahead and try it playing around with that by putting some different shapes in your level. So try putting one of each, just so you can get a feel of what each one does. Now all these shapes can be modified like the other ones could. You can move them around using this, the, the move tool. You can scale them, you can rotate them. And so you can make some interesting stuff right off the bat. For instance, I'm gonna make this wedge a bit taller and a bit longer and maybe a bit wider. And then I'm gonna take this sphere and I'm gonna move it over the top of it, okay? And if I go ahead and click on play, you'll see, boom, we already have a ramp. That sphere rolls down the ramp and then rolls away off into the sunset. Uh, go be free, sphere, you're no longer a slave. Ooh, and he fell off the edge, so maybe not the best idea. But you can already start seeing how we can make some more interesting shapes out of these things, okay? The cylinders can be pushed around. If you make them big enough, you can even run on them like a circus ball. You can stand on top of it and run, and it'll roll backwards. So you can do really cool stuff like that. So we haven't really talked about most of the windows in the editor here. We've really only talked about the middle window right here, which is the viewport, and a little bit about the top here. But there's two really important windows over here on the right. You can see we have the Explorer, and we have the Properties window, okay? Okay? Now the Explorer is just a list of everything in the world. You can see as I click on different things in my world here, specifically if I click on this wedge, you can see the wedge, uh, the wedge uh, object over here is highlighted. If I click on this part, it's just named part, but that's highlighted as well, okay? And this is a list of everything in your game world, like I said. If I click on one of these parts and then push the F key on my keyboard, it's going to teleport me straight to that part. If I click on wedge and click on F, it's gonna teleport me to that part. If I click on base plate, which is the giant platform we're standing on, and then click on F, it's gonna zoom me way out so I can see the whole thing, okay? So that's a good way to navigate around if you're like, hmm, I know I put an alien here in my level, but I can't remember where he was. You can just go ahead and find him on this list, click on F, and you'll teleport right to him. So go ahead and try that out. Try clicking on a few different blocks in your world and pushing F to teleport to them. It's really handy for getting around, and I think you'll see the usefulness of this tool. Okay, the other window here is the properties window here, and this is incredibly important to building levels in Roblox. The properties window allows you to customize the block or the part that you're using fully, okay? You can do a lot more customization than what we have been doing so far. If, for instance, I click on, let's add a new part here, okay? I'm gonna just add a regular old block to my level. If I click on this block, you can see it's highlighted here, and then go over to my properties, I can change a lot of different stuff about the block, and we're just gonna go through this one by one. One little quick tip you should do is go ahead and put your mouse on the divider between the viewport and the properties window. You'll see it turns into two little arrows. Just go ahead and click and drag to make your properties window a little bit bigger so you can more easily read and see what we're going over here in this next part. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mess with this appearance section, okay? We can change the way our block looks. The first two options, brick color and color, are pretty much the same thing, it's just the color of our block. And if you click on that, it's gonna bring up a window of all the different colors, all these different colors you can select. And if these aren't even enough, you can click on more colors at the bottom to bring up a second window. But I'm happy with just this big honeycomb of different colors, and I'm going to make my block, let's make it pastel light blue, because I think that's a pretty color, and I'm gonna be trying to turn this block into a block of ice, so I think that's the right color for that. Okay, next up we have the material, and this is the material the block is made out of. And this affects two things. The material controls what the block looks like, but it also controls how the block interacts with the world. So for instance, if I come over here to material and click on that and change it from plastic to, let's say, ice, you'll see that now it looks like a little bit like ice. And if I click on play and I jump on this block, 
give it a second here for me to spawn in. If I jump on this block, not only does it look a little bit different, I also slide a little bit as you can see. So it behaves just like ice. So you can make much more advanced block types because you can use different things besides plastic, okay? So go ahead and pause your video and try clicking on this material and change what it's made out of. Maybe try making it out of brick or cobblestone or diamond or fabric. Go ahead and play around with the different materials and choose one that you like. One of the more interesting materials you can use is changing the block to be a neon block. If you click on the block and change it to, let's see here, neon, and then make the color something a little more, uh, a little darker, it's more interesting, you can see it makes the block a really bright, solid color, okay? And it actually, if I make it like hot pink, you'll see it actually does glow a little bit. So if I put it over here and then hit play, you'll see it's got a little bit of a glow to it, okay? So you can use that to make some really interesting looking blocks uh, and stuff like that, okay? So neon's another good one you can try out. I want this block to be ice though, so I'm gonna bring it back over here. I'm gonna change the color back to pastel light blue and I'll make it back to an ice block, okay? The next two properties, reflections and transparency, control one, how reflective it is, how much it's gonna reflect sunlight, stuff like that. If I max that out, you can see, uh, and then actually if I click on play, you can see it's a bit more reflective than it was. You can't really see that ice structure on it before that we could see before these sort of cracks in the ice. It also reflects the sunlight a lot more. Now ice isn't the best material to make it reflective, but if you make it something like metal or something like that, you can see you can make it really, really reflective and it'll reflect light, stuff like that. Transparency is interesting because you can make it, actually let's turn off the reflectance here. Transparency, you can make the block partially invisible. You can see here, I can make my block partially see-through, okay? And that's really useful for something like ice because ice is partially see-through. You can use this to make windows as well. You can do all sorts of really cool stuff with this transparency slider. So I'm gonna make it partially transparent, but not quite that transparent because you can see through ice, but not usually that well. So I'm gonna make it partially transparent. I left mine at 0.15. Okay, down here we have the data section, okay? And this is all the data associated with the block. The first one right here is name. I can change this name to blue ice, and you'll see up here at the top in the workspace, it's now called blue ice. And this is really useful if you wanna have specific blocks that you wanna be able to find easily in the list. Because right now they're all named part, but if you name one of them, you know, like a bounce pad, and name another one like um, kill switch, it'll be easier to find the different parts in your levels, okay? So you can go ahead and change the name for your block uh, and name it anything you want. Next up we have the orientation and the position. We're gonna skip over parent for now because we'll talk about that in our, uh, our entity component parent child video that comes up later on. But we're looking right here at orientation and position. Now orientation and position are just the two properties we can change with the move tool and the rotate tool. You'll see here as I'm rotating it and moving it, those numbers are changing around, okay? So you can go ahead and you can either change it using the tools or you can type those values in specifically. If I wanted it to be rotated just eight degrees on the z-axis, you can see it's easier to type it in because I can rotate it just a little bit and the tool usually wants me to rotate a lot at one time. So again, orientation and position are just the same numbers you change when you're using move and rotate. We're gonna skip down here to the next important one, which is anchor, okay? You can see this little option right here that says anchored and it has a checkbox. If you click on that, you'll see a checkbox appears. And if you uncheck or unclick it, or click it again, the checkbox or the check mark will disappear, okay? Now anchored is really important because if a block or a part is anchored, that means it cannot move, it will not move. Gravity won't move it, you won't move it, other parts hitting it won't move it. And this is really good for certain things. If you make a building out of parts, for instance, you don't want it to be knocked over, or maybe you do, but let's pretend you don't want it knocked over. You'd wanna make all the different walls and the ceiling, stuff like that, anchored. If you have a floating platform that you wanna use for an obstacle course like we're gonna be doing in this chapter, you'll wanna make that anchored as well. So let me, if I just go ahead and click on the anchor checkbox and then click on play, you'll see here that my ice block is floating above the ground, but it doesn't fall, okay? And this is good because now I can make things like staircases and stuff like that without having to stretch them all the way to the ground. I can just have them floating in the air and that makes for some pretty interesting stuff. Now we're gonna skip down to the very, very bottom, okay? We have this last section way down here called surface, and surface is hidden. You'll need to click on that arrow next to it to open it up, okay? And if you open it up, you can see there's all the different surfaces of our block. The top surface, bottom surface, front surface, back surface, and these are the different, uh, the different sides of our block, and we can change what they look like. You'll notice all of our blocks, by default, have this sort of Lego pattern on the top, these little bumps, okay? And that's pretty useful for sizing it. You can see how big it is by using these bumps, but sometimes you don't like the way they look as much, okay? So what you can 
do is go ahead and click on any one of these and change what uh, the surface is. For instance, the top surface right here says studs. Studs are those little bumps you'd see on a Lego block. If I go ahead and click on that drop down arrow and change it to smooth, you can see now suddenly we don't have those bumps anymore and it looks a lot more like ice. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure all the different sides of my block are smooth because I like the way it looks. And there's a lot of different ones in here like hinge, glue, studs, stuff like that that are very useful and sometimes have very mechanical, uh, they have mechanical ramifications. You can use the hinge to make a door for instance. We're not gonna talk about that right now but we will talk about that in a later video. But for right now, I'm just gonna make everything smooth, okay? So it looks really, really good. It looks like ice. And now if you zoom in on my block, you can see I have a pretty convincing ice block. I might wanna up the transparency just a little bit to make it less see-through, but it's already pretty convincing, okay? So now that you have these new tools, the, uh, the different shapes and the different properties, you can make something much more advanced. So what I want you to do after this video is take a couple minutes and try building a basic obstacle course. It doesn't have to be big, it could just be a few, uh, a few blocks, uh, maybe like three or four blocks, but try making your own obby course, okay? Uh, you can add some different jumps, you can add some ice to make it slippery, stuff like that. In the next video, we're gonna talk about some more advanced things. We're gonna jump right into scripting, which will allow us to actually give custom properties to blocks and make them do interesting stuff beyond what they can do normally. So, I hope you guys had fun with this video, and I hope you guys have fun making your very first obstacle course. I'll see you guys in the next video.